All right, I'm super excited. We're finally working on this little project we've talked about doing for a long time. We've got this little cabin here and we've been wanting to put a small slab in front of it. We used to keep our firewood here just to keep it out of the weather, but we've talked about having somewhere that we can kind of extend the roof line just a little bit for just a little bit of kind of protection out of the weather. So what I did was kind of measured off here. We want about a nine foot slab here and the building's about 12 feet wide or so. That should work pretty good. Give us a decent little eave extension. So what we've done here is just put a little bit of slope on the slab away from the building there and that'll just make sure that water moves away instead of into the building. Of course if this was something we wanted like a level floor with a floor drain you know we would want this to be level but being that it's just kind of out of the weather here we're going to go ahead and slope it away from the building. I don't think we're going to put anything super heavy on here. We're not going to park any cars or trucks or anything and so it's probably going to be pretty good at around four to five inches thick. We're not going to put a tremendous amount of work into this to make it super smooth and super level we do need to fill in a little bit more with some gravel here and then of course compact that to kind of get ready but we're aiming for about that four inch mark on the slab. I've actually been wanting to get going on some concrete projects that we've had lined up but being that it's winter and we're just kind of getting through the breakup here uh, we can't pour concrete all year round. We actually have to wait for not only the, the snow to melt and the ground to thaw but it actually has to firm up so where you you know it's not got some squish to it and so we're just kind of getting through that here. We're kind of in a south view so we're a little earlier than a lot of the other places we still have road limits on our roads because there's still frost coming out of the ground where we are we tend to use this crushed rock base uh, just for drainage purposes uh, we could put an insulation barrier underneath this slab and that would probably help a lot honestly because with the freeze thaw that we get here um, if we get moisture underneath this slab it'll cause it to heave and crack so I'm not sure if that's something we're gonna do here there's a good likelihood will move the building in the near future you know so I don't really want this to be super permanent uh, so putting too much money into this might be actually a bad idea. We actually purchased a sawmill a few years ago and use it to sawmill our entire timber frame and one of my big regrets with that sawmill was how we positioned it. We just made ourselves a lot of work. We used these kind of trailer pads or RV pads and we laid them out on the ground here. The problem is as we were tossing logs on and bouncing beams and doing all this stuff the sawmill kept shifting and moving and since we were trying to make a really precise timber frame ah man it was so much work I had to calibrate this machine every single log to make sure that it was done right and so I've been wanting to pour a slab for that project it's kind of frustrating but twice now I've actually done all the work to screed this uh, area here between our back steps and our deck and put pavers in there but the reason we're using pavers is we're still doing construction on the house and so I have to keep moving them and destroying all this area so I can't bring myself to pour a slab there but it's been on my mind I feel like if we had a nice curving slab or something over here even if we end up doing some landscaping or something over there it'd be really nice to have that actually like a nice flat you know smooth walkable area. So here I am thinking about doing all these concrete projects and I see people on the internet losing their mind for this dry pour concrete method. Of course I don't know if anybody's building anything this big maybe they are I don't know I haven't really paid a lot of attention but it does kind of like yeah it, I think you have the same reaction you guys have like like, is that, is that really work? I mean, why does the whole world seem to think that we have to mix concrete before we put it down? I mean, we've put a lot of concrete on this property. We've poured small slabs, big slabs, concrete walls, and none of it has been dry. Let's just agree on that. Hello, are there any yellow jackets in there from over winter? Come out, come out, final warning. So typically we're gonna put concrete in a concrete mixer or a tumbler, right? And we have these paddles in here that are gonna help bring the water and the cement mixture together and hydrate it evenly so that you get even strength. Of course, the aggregate needs to be mixed up too because sometimes these bags don't mix well. And concrete really gets its strength from the mix of all three. You need sand, cement, and some sort of aggregate. And so getting a good mixture makes it super strong. 
long. We've mixed quite a few slabs in this mixer here. In fact, the little one that's in front of our cabin and the one that's at our deck there. Uh, let's just agree, we've done some really bad things to those slabs, like hit them with the backhoe, drive over them with the cars and trucks. They've been out in the freeze thaw, freeze thaw, and they're doing really good. So what we know is that mixed concrete is super strong. So before we pour a slab this size, we're gonna wanna put some sort of metal reinforcement in it, right? Because concrete uh, has extremely amazing compressive strength, but as far as shear and tensive strength or tensile strength, uh, it's not too great. You know, there's actually a few things they say about concrete. They guarantee it won't catch fire. Nobody's gonna steal it. It's gonna crack and it's gonna be gray. So before I go and put several hundred dollars into this slab, I thought I would just do a test and let's kind of take a look at this process together. I grabbed a couple of glass bowls. Don't worry, this one's not gonna end me in the doghouse. The lady said, don't really care about those glass bowls anyway. Plus I think they'll be just fine afterwards. So why don't we take a little bit closer look at the way concrete's normally put together and then we'll try the dry pour and see how they compare. So the bag here says that we wanna add our water to the mixer first and for a full 60 pound bag, that's two and a half quarts of water. I'm gonna guess we're gonna use about a quarter of this bag for this test. So let's go ahead and let's start at maybe two pints and maybe just a little bit over. There's one. Two. Okay, and to give this a fair comparison, I just made these small metal grids out of some kind of chicken wire. It's not really the equivalent of rebar, but we'll just use them just to give us an example. And instead of having to guess, we should be able just to go ahead and put our concrete in here and kind of get a good idea about how much we need. Of course, volume's volume, right? So once we add water to that, it's gonna probably fill up. So let's go a little bit more, and if we end up with a little too much concrete, that's probably okay. You know what you don't want is having a cold joint with concrete, right? You don't want to ever run short because then they round trip a truck on you and you end up with a cold joint in your concrete. That's that's probably pretty close. All right, and if we're gonna do this right, we, we should turn the mixer on first here. All right. And we got our concrete here and here we go. Probably should have put that in there a little bit slower, but it's in there now. Here's where it gets a little bit difficult. Normally we would dump this into a wheelbarrow while it's moving, right? Well, let's see what happens here. Okay. One man concrete dump. Okay, here we go. We're going into the bowl. Let's see if we can get it all into the bowl. <laughs> Oh no, see we're now we're a little bit short. So I'm gonna put a little more mix in there. All right, now we're cooking, looking, looking really good. I'm not a concrete expert, but I like the way this mud looks. Oh, look at that, it's like it's coming right out of a truck. Oh yeah, beautiful. All right, look at that. <laughs> that's that's some pretty good mud. It's 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 a little watery. Okay, I'll admit I'm a little I'm a little high on the water. You know I got a little carried away. But here's the good news, uh, that will make it really easy to put this in here. So normally you would have this in the in the concrete first, but guess what? Because this is kind of wet, we can just go ahead and work it down in there. Okay, so I guess you know other than way too hydrated, there's not a lot to do here. Uh, typically we would let this kind of uh, go off for quite a while here and then we can actually do some work and make this nice and smooth and you know what they call flat work in the concrete business so I don't know I mean is that really that difficult well I'm not really sure but it is what it is okay so that's what we would normally do and now for the dry pour method okay so first we have to admit that this is a little bit cheating because this is not really representative of the real world see this is is non-porous and so if you were to dry pour concrete in an actual porous situation um, you know, it, the water is going to run right through or right out, and that's what's going to make it very difficult for it to stay hydrated, which is necessary for it to reach maximum strength. I guess this really isn't a good example either, because all this water would normally drain out. I mean, if you're dry, if you're doing a garage slab that's got some uh, a moisture barrier, maybe not. But in this situation where we have crushed rock, 
all that water would eventually just run right out, right? So this is not really a fair example, but we'll throw this dry pour concrete a bone and see what we end up with here. Okay, so first things first, there's no way we're ever getting that in there after the fact. So let's go ahead and put that in there. And we've got our concrete mix here, and here we go. Okay, good. I don't know how full do we go. I don't know. I don't want to go too full. That looks like it's too much. Okay, let's. Uh, okay. You know what's really fun is dry pouring concrete on a windy day. Okay, there we go. Right away, we've already got a problem here. We've got aggregate at the top. So, what do we do about that? Do we steal some fines? Do we kind of like try to do some sort of like magic poetry here? Okay. <laughs> Maybe we. Oh, there we go. Spank it like a baby. That works. Okay, we could, we could also screed it. You know, if we, if we went above the rim here, you know, if we go all the way up here, we could actually like, you know, wiggle it with a screed board. That would work. That's looking pretty good. Not gonna pass for level, but. Well, I don't know, maybe, maybe once, you know, we get some water in there, we can kind of do what we would do with flat work, which is to kind of like wiggle, you know, wiggle it when it's sort of in that gelatinous stage. We aren't working the aggregate down as much as we're working the fines up and sort of, you know, kind of encouraging that, uh, that really tough aggregate to find its way down. So what we want to do now is hydrate it and let's kind of keep an eye here because we've got a glass bowl and let's see kind of what happens as we hydrate. All right, I got some water here and uh, no, I didn't meter this, but let's just see, let's just kind of gently pour here. Oh, do you hear that? <laughs> kind of like pop rocks. Whoa, can you guys see that? It's actually going down the bowl. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You know, have you ever been to the beach and you know in the sand, those little things that like look like bubbles, I think they might be mussels or clams or something. That's actually what this looks like, like little bubbles coming out here. Oh, wow, you can actually see it working its way down the sides. That's kind of fun. So this whole like top down hydration thing, it's kind of cool. Right, look, it's, it's looking kind of thirsty. All that water's kind of gone away here. So let's give it another drink. I feel like maybe I'm trying to grow concrete. Is that a thing? Boy, th this water's not disappearing as fast, but it's definitely making its way down. And right, I'm not sure, maybe I'm just not giving it enough of a drink on the one side here. Looks like we need some water right here. If it just go down that side. You know, it's kind of all running to the low side there and not really hydrating right here too much. I bet if we just give it time, it'll probably go. How's this side looking over here? You know, it's looking pretty good on this side. You can kind of see the, the water sort of traveling. It's trying to travel, well, I guess kind of between the aggregate here, but you know, it's, boy, it just looks like it needs a lot of water to me. Of course, all that water now has gone off the top here. So let's give it another drink. I'm not sure this is faster, <laughs> but that said, we're this is science and we need to give this the appropriate amount of time. I feel like we're kind of going the opposite direction of this over here, the, the premix stuff. The fines seem to have disappeared here from the top. You know, that side, you know, looks decently high. Whoa, that's getting heavy. All right, so maybe now this is the low side and maybe all the water will run over there. Should we help it? Do we need to, whoa, whoa, that's like already set up. That's not good. Here's hoping the water will find its way down. Let's just keep giving it drinks here. Maybe we should speed this up. Maybe we did it wrong. Maybe there's actually a process to this. We should have done something else instead of just going at it head on here. Oh, now I'm overflowing the bowl. There, did I give it a drink? I tried to poke a hole down the edge of the bowl there. Oh, see, yeah, there you go. Now it's, I think it's finding its way down. Is it going in? Yeah, I think it's going in. Right, let's cheat a little bit here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now it's going. I think you can see it coming in down there at the bottom. The water's definitely going in really slow. Okay, let's try a little bit more. I'm gonna do a little work on the surface here and see if I can't convince some of that aggregate to work its way down here versus having kind of the rough and exposed aggregate idea. All right, I've done a bunch of work trying to smooth out the top here, and it looks like the hydration still needs a little bit of help, so I'm gonna let this run for a little while. All right, it's been, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or so, and it looks like we've got pretty much full hydration. All right, so here's where we're at now at about 45 minutes. We got the dry pour here, 
and it, you know it's there's just water sitting on top I think I think it's trying to find its way in but man I'm telling you it's really really slow and then here we've got the wet pour and you know it's you can actually start to see here that the water is becoming transparent so all the fines have settled down and I guess <laughs> in a situation like this I don't know where the water would go I guess it would normally evaporate but that's a lot of water to evaporate but you know this isn't going to hurt the concrete at all that I'm aware of you can just leave wet concrete wet in fact the way to make it stronger is to keep it wet because you as the process continues the concrete generates heat and it actually like perspires or this actually evaporates and so you have to keep adding water to the concrete to really get it to the absolute max strength so this little bit of water here isn't gonna hurt anything right we're over here I don't know I mean the water's clear I'm just not sure it's getting down in there well I don't really want to stir up the fines too much but I guess well that's definitely hard well we got all this gravel on top so I guess there's that like that's just I haven't really been able to figure out a way normally if with with wet pour a, a motion like this really does bring the fines up and that aggregate will just very slowly find its way down of course the screeding process you know moving back and forth and kind of working the solution or the the, the slurry sort of brings those fines up and you, this aggregate tends to kind of because it's heavy it tends to kind of find its way down and the fines work their way up but boy it's not working right here it's not working right now we're over here i actually just was well this was wet i was just kind of playing with it like massaging it giving it a little back rub you know after like a not a really hard nine to five come home and just you know kick your feet up take the socks off you know that kind of thing and just giving it a good pat down there and this looks really good i mean unfortunately you're not going to be able to screed it because or float it because there's all this surface water i guess maybe if we waited long enough we, we could get in there and really float it smooth but that's not really the point of this test it's more like a strength test more than it's a how to finish it although it's turning into how to finish it test well guys i've been watering my concrete now for over an hour and well it's just not looking very good I tell you what, we have had some amazing people come and help us with concrete projects on our home. And maybe we're just concrete snobs. I guess that's always a possibility. But I'm just saying that if this is the concrete that you're after, I would definitely not put it in the front of the house, if you know what I mean. What's funny is I haven't touched the concrete over here that's mixed since we started this whole experiment. And it looks really, really good. Uh, of course, you know, getting concrete wet is stressful. We have a joke ready or not here they come that's our concrete joke because concrete's just stressful it's just how it is and i think i get the allure of the whole dry pour method you don't have to use a mixer i guess although i'm pretty sure this is a lot more work overall i mean mucking wet mud around yeah that's a lot of work and i guess pouring bags is less work but i'm not quite sold what i'm thinking is we need to give this a little bit more time I'm not sold on putting this in this slab yet or anywhere else on our property. Stay tuned. I have a feeling there's part two coming. <laughs>